moved in to the lowest tax rate in the state. Um, and when we were building our house, you know, it was um, back and forth about the school, middle school stuff. And I thought it was finished, but the majority of the people voted, we do not want to deal with debt. So a school, when we already have a school system in Arlington, my children go to Arlington. They come from they, got, they went before I even moved to um, the lake because it's an open school business. They have plenty of space. They're taking people from Fayette County, taking people from Holland, from other cities. They have plenty, plenty of room. They're not uh, overcrowded, which has been said before, to get the middle school. Uh, so I think uh, from what I'm seeing here is it's a continuation of what was going on before. Just not wanting to do what the people want to do. The 60% that voted to not go into debt. But now we want to put all this debt, especially on the backs of a retirement community, which are limited in funds. But now we want to dump all this debt instead of looking at other alternatives as building up commercial properties. Why don't we do our due diligence first and not just try to dump all this debt on people? As a Christian, I know I'm a Christian, uh, I have to manage my time. The bank is a city. We pray to God that many, we should be mind, mindful of how we can love the people more than we are.
what used to be our island now is like the notion of 1958. Most of the people on my street, I guess the average age, including myself, probably about 75 years old. Sorry, I'm handy. <laughs> but uh, most are retired, most are widows. Uh, if you can imagine the tax increase on 50 acres on land that has three houses, uh, we'll probably sell them here uh, for example, if you do the tax increase. Which would be a shame. Yes, it would. What I've seen in the last two years the late one, uh, I called about what a few cents was and I left the utility bill and it's for storm water treatment, uh, stormwater handling and everything, but I've asked for the city of Lakeland to put a loaded riprap in my driveway and I will place it. My front pasture fence is the working way. The road is going to right by New Salem Church, which is historical. If you look at it, a lot of the guardrails aren't even supported anymore. There's 15 to 20 foot holes on both sides and they're going to meet in the middle. And I'd hate to see that happen one day for someone to drive the church. And we lose one uh, child or an elderly citizen. So if you're going to do something, we have to move our own trees out of the street. We have to clean our own ditches out. We're on the north side, and the only reason you got the north side like is for a tax base. I'm going to do my due diligence here to try to get a de-annexation program for us on the north side, and then yeah. let everybody on this side yeah. of the river eat the taxes. I don't have a problem with school. Bolton School is supposed to close next year. Why don't Lakeland rent that school and see if you can run a school of that size before you build one? I think that's a very legitimate reason to school there to establish. But the reason I've heard is they don't want the children from the south side to have to drive over to Bolton. Well, they're being bus from Raleigh, Egypt. They're being bus from the west side. There's the buses run every day. So, be fair about it, but I could probably see us moving out. Thank you, Bush. Thank you. Thank you. 
explain that if we could. Where you can get a loan, but got the people supported, and you pay for the higher interest rate, and you got your loan, even though we didn't want it. Now, because that caps out the bag, and you know how to get money around what the people want, you can do it this way without even asking. This. Okay? Now, this is the point. It says, with liberty and justice for all, at the end of the Pledge of Allegiance. For all also includes North Lakeland, not just the other side of the river, okay? North Lakeland is not your funding source so that you can just take our money and you can fund it for all your parks. We don't need parks. Everybody on my, we got a park down at uh, uh, Brunswick Road at Pleasant Ridge and we've got to spend there for years. Now, when you took us in, we had Bolton and Barrett's Chapel. We had two schools. We didn't need to build any schools in North Lakeland. All right? And now we are forced to pay for all these schools that everybody wants so that you can have the progress, you can have the agenda that you want, which means let's create more sales taxes. Let's, uh, let's build more. Let's make this some grandiose thing. I want you all to understand that that is not everybody's agenda. You see? There's a place called North Lakeland, and it's not our agenda to do all of that. We don't want it. If we could, like he said, get taken out of Lakeland and let y'all have your bag of trips and do what you want to do on your side of the river, more power to you. Let us go back to the county. Let us have our roads maintained by the county. Let us have our fire department funded by the county. That, By the way, when we got in next, our taxes did go down in Shelby County. Part that we were paying for Shelby County taxes to support our fire department that we were using, nobody gave us credit for that. Nobody said, here's your money back now we're going to charge you for Lakeland. No, our taxes stay the same. We pay Lakeland's fee too. You see, it's just not fair for, and if, if you want to say, well, that's because you're in North Lakeland and you're part of us, well, we don't want that. That's, thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Uh, Andrew Jr. I'm watching it on my watch, but I want them to at least get it. Yeah, I uh, I'll just try to be aware of two minutes, please. Uh, so that, that's okay. It's all right. I'm Andrew Mills Jr. Look at 6575 Palomino Drive. Uh, like you said, I've lived there my whole life. All my family was up there. My aunts, my uncles, my grandparents. That's, that's all I've ever known. I live in a house that he grew up in. Uh, a lot of my buddies I grew up with still live there too, and I used to be extremely proud of where I lived. And ever since we've been part of life, and I, uh, I work for another municipality as a firefighter, and I'm proud to work for that municipality because they got their act together. Um, I'm embarrassed Ryan Lake on my mail address, my mail somewhere. I still write Arlington because I'd much rather be part of Arlington than Lake. And I'm right along with them. If we get the annex, maybe I'd jump right on ship in a heartbeat. It is embarrassing. This whole entire thing is embarrassing when everything's going wrong when we get here. Um, I've always referred to, to North Lakeland as we're the red-headed stepchildren of, of Lakeland, because we are. Uh, Y'all got us for tax money, and that's it. Uh, like you said, we got to pay extra to have something picked up on our, our curb if it's uh, trees or debris or something like that. When I was in the county, I didn't do that. When I was in the county, my street got taken care of. My street is in terrible shape. You can ask anybody else that's on Palomino Drive. It's an embarrassment. You can't drink a cup of coffee that's going on your lap. The county took much better care of us than what I get taken care of now. And I'm paying extra, and I'm getting treated more poorly than I was before. It's, it's embarrassing. Uh, the schools, I think, are unnecessary. They're unneeded. Uh, I know a lot of people whose kids go to Arlington, a lot of people I work with, and they love Arlington School. I have no complaints from them about it. We're getting the cart before the horse. We're spending money unnecessarily. And the city's been run unlike I would have in my own household. I'm teaching my kids to be responsible with money, and I feel like this is very unresponsible the way so many things have been done here. That's all I got to say. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. Uh, Linda Joel. Mayor and Commissioners, thank you for this opportunity. My name is Linda Shaw. I live at 6491 Salem, quote, North Lakeland here with my husband, Bill. We both are retired seniors, worked, gosh, 45, <coughs> 50 years, and we are on a retirement pension now, and that is a fixed income. Y'all aren't there yet, but just wait, you'll learn. Um, so that's a fixed income, 
and I understand that there will be an increase in property taxes. I reviewed the minutes from the last few months when all this high school started, uh, the business part of it, and looking at the numbers and the loans and all of that, I do have a math background and it doesn't add up. The numbers are not there. Because someone had said, well, there won't be any increased taxes. Well, that's not true. There's compelling evidence for you to reconsider all of this and look at the various sources of funding. Look at your existing interlocal agreements with Arlington. You know, the old saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I would encourage you to look at what the motives are here. Is it control? Now, I know there's been some conflicts in the past, but let's, like all these people said, if it's not needed, it's not needed. Don't put an undue tax burden and financial hardship on most of the seniors that are in our area. I'm from Missouri. Show me the numbers. It's not adding up. And what are the real motives here? And someone said something about the increase will have the highest tax base in the county. This will be a red flag. No one would want to move back to Lakeland. People would be moving out. So look at the overall picture. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Thank you. May I say something at this point? Um, I would like everyone here to know that it's on a fixed income or retired that I have already directed City Manager Horn to bring to us at the next meeting all of the necessary facts and, and what you have to do to be able to apply for a tax freeze. And that he will have all of that information for us at the next meeting. If, it is, if we do have a tax, a tax increase and the people that are on a fixed income and are seniors, he will have that information for you at the next meeting. I, I asked for that after our last meeting on Thursday. Even though I'm not retired, I am on a fixed income because mine can only go so high. I've worked so long that I'm at the cap, at the top of my, my income that I can possibly make in the field of education. So, and I am a one income household. So I do understand that, but he's going to have that information for everyone. So if there anybody else is going to speak to that, please know that that has been requested and the information will be disseminated to all citizens so that you know what to do, where to go, who to see, <coughs> what you need to do to fill out the forms for that. So I just want you to know that, uh, that we are considering that absolutely. Okay? Thank you. Just real quickly, um, I'm low up here to retire on fixed income. Believe me, I hear you. All right, uh, let's move on to George Munchow. I hear the commissioners thank you for this time. George Munchell, 10150, Highway 70. Uh, we own a little business there. It's a tree, tree uh, landscaping business. We've been there about 25 years. I'll make it short. At this point, I'm just opposed to borrowing this kind of money. Uh, I think it doesn't impact, or it does impact, our fiscal integrity of our city. And I think we would be uh, biting off more than we can chew or need to chew at this point. Uh, I'm opposed to it at this point. I'm not opposed to looking at the facts and the need for schools if and when that's necessary. But it just seems to me we're getting, as one person put it, uh, uh, the cart before the horse here. So I would, I would urge you to slow down, get us more facts, and then hold off on putting our city in this much more debt. Thank you. Thank you, George. Uh, Karen Parsley. Great. 
not buy something that you don't have the money in your left hand to hold on to. There were some questions that I had. I listened to your presentation by Senator Woman. I listened to, to Mr. Wright's presentation. They're not the same. They're very complex, which I don't understand all the problems part of it, but they're very complex. We have not had time to look at both of these. We have not had time to compare them side by side. We need that time. You know, he mentioned a USDA loan that would be a little bit longer period, but a very, very low interest rate. Why would we not look into that? There were some things in your presentation, Mayor, <laughs> Vice Mayor Long, that you said we have no tax increase for four years. Is that correct? Okay. All right. You would have no tax increase, and then a fifth year, we would have a tax increase depending on whether you got a flexible con, non flexible one, and you also mentioned an increase, then that would go on top of that, I assume, that would be for repaying school workers. So I said, I'd just like some clarification on all of that. But at some time in the future, we must look at paying off debts rather than interest. We need to look at that. We need to compare everybody's figures that they've come up with and reach a logical conclusion for our society. I'm not against the school. I love kids. I was with the public library in Memphis. I love kids. <laughs> um, but I want to do the right thing for them. I want them to have the right things that they need to go forward with. But I also want us to be able to afford these things without collapsing as a city. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Mayor, may I respond? Sure. Uh, Ma'am, I was just going to say that um, that was the reason for the resolution tonight because my numbers were so far off of theirs. I would like to bring that professionally. This resolution is what's called a um, it's not it's not an authorizing resolution, meaning that it doesn't actually start the process to actually borrow the money. It brings in professionals and makes sure whatever numbers I use, because I'm not the city finance, you know, professional, right? So because of that, you know, we're bringing in a, uh, or I'm asking to bring in an outside professional so that whatever assumptions I've used or whatever assumptions the city staff used, we can, as a board, determine which assumptions we want to go through. Sure. Um, I chose, or on my resolution, I put PFM and Bassbury because of their reputation they have in West Tennessee and their, his, their history with this type of work. Uh, Adam Henry. <coughs> folks are coming up I'm going to go ahead and call the next name so you can kind of stage yourself and be ready uh, next would be Jay Tyler Adam Henry 4480 Mount Gillespie uh, mayor commissioners uh, thanks for the opportunity to speak um, so many things to say so little time to say it um, one of the things I'm really just interested in clarifying some things and there's a lot of why is this being shoved down our throat? Um, where did this come from? And I would like to read from our Lakeland City Charter. Um, chapter 19, 619, 101, paragraph 30. Our duly elected board and mayor have to establish schools to the extent authorized pursuant to general law, determine the necessary boards, officers, teachers required, therefore, and fix their compensation, purchase or otherwise acquire land for schoolhouses, playgrounds or other purposes connected with the schools, purchase or erect all necessary buildings and do all other acts necessary to establish, maintain and operate a complete educational system within the city. We don't live in Arlington. It says it here. We all raised our hands and said, we will adhere to this. It also, excuse me, it also states, 619-103 public schools, such town may establish, erect, and maintain public schools. 
and may assess and levy taxes for such purposes. And I know you all know this, but this is for clarification for anybody that has any question about where this is coming from. It's not drained out of thin air. Um, some of the things about the taxes are a little bit concerning. However you want to look at this, unfortunately, we live in a county. Our county has the second or the top tax by twice as much of any county in the state of Tennessee. And we are strapped with that burden. Our taxes, the 26% of our tax bill that we pay, we pay the whole 100%, our 26% goes to the city. Only 26%. And Lakeland taxes are 120th in the state. We're that far down the list. So our Lakeland taxes, our, our tax bill is, yes, unfortunately rather large, but it's because of Shelby County. So our tax burden from our city is actually not that high. Um, now, you may laugh, but... Please, I, I will take corrections. And you can go to www.comptrollertennessee.gov, put in Lakeland, and it's all printed right here. We're down the list, down to 120. Um, I, like I said, I had so many things. I'm at three minutes. Thank you. I didn't have a glass of water before I got up here. So. You did fine. <laughs> Thanks, Ashley. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right, Jay mm -hmm. Tyler's next, and then Sam Cooper will be up after him. So, Sam, if you would please get ready. Uh, Mr. Mayor, Mr. Vice Mayor, Commissioner, thank you for this opportunity to address you. I'm honored. I'm opposed to the city adopting any more debt uh, for a school that I don't feel is quite required at the time. I'm not against schools, but I think we ought to bring our schools online at the appropriate time when we can afford it, when we have the population to support it, and we have the tax base to pay for it. That's my, my primary point. I also don't understand why we have to have this special call to meeting. All of a sudden, our hands go up and everybody's hair is on fire. We have to have a special meeting. I don't know why. I don't know why we couldn't have conducted our meeting on Thursday when it's normally scheduled. I, I, I find this reprehensible. I also would like the opportunity to vote. If I have an opportunity to vote and give my opinion and the, the majority says, let's build a high school, I'm all for it. We'll do a general obligation by, uh, bond and we'll have uh, fair rates. But this CON is, is not the way to go. It will consume us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Sam Cooper, and then next will be Gary Nicholson. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner, my name is Sam Cooper. I live at 6504 Palomino. And uh, as we were coming into the room, I was really kind of interested in seeing some young people here. I hope they are getting a good civics lesson out of this uh, from a board that is elected. I'm reminded that we are that the governors or the people that are elected govern govern at the will of the government. Uh, I read, listened with interest about the city charter, but I also believe in the people speaking. We have five people here. I'm really not really as concerned about what you five people say as when it goes to a vote or a referendum. In my opinion, a referendum vote should override anything you say. Because that's the people actually speaking. So I hope the civics lesson these children are learning is not how to do an end run around the referendum was voted down. The tax deal that we were told would be nothing. But I think they had this meeting around the first of the year before in December about let's do this quickly. That didn't go. And I think a couple of you are on this board simply based on this whole issue, a lot on this issue. So I'm not against schools. The previous gentleman said uh, if the people were to say yes, 
I believe in the majority. I believe in democracy. I believe when you put it on the ballot, people go to the voting machine and they say yes, I'll be right behind you. But if they say no, I'm going, I'm going to be right behind you too on that one. Only in the other direction. I'm sorry, everything I'm hearing is no. My kids went to private schools. We bought up here uh, three years ago. And I'm beginning to think that the person that sold us the property now saw the handwriting on the wall. They saw what was coming. So, uh, you need to do what the people say do. That's it. You are, we are governed, you, you govern at the will, at the pleasure of the governed. So, thank you, Sam. Uh, Gary, and up next will be Linda Miller. So. My name is Gary Nicholson. I live at 3151 Woodmead Lane, which is in Sterling Place. And a lot of our people that live with us, they're mainly retired. Um, what you said was good a while ago. I can appreciate that. But what I can't appreciate is when you voted and the vote was no. It says in the Bible, as y'all read, it says, let your yeses be yes and your no's be no. When the people spoke, they said no. I don't understand how you can sit up there and say, we're not going to care what you say. Well, we are the people voting for you. I mean, we have to, if, if the people speak and they say no, you're obligated as a elected official to do what the citizens say no matter how you feel i think y'all need to pray thank you thank you gary this is linda miller and then next will be patrick simmons arguments for not having a school now and yes we need a school now and, and all that and I, I understand how people feel so strongly about wanting a school but my biggest gripe is the way that it's been the sneaky underhanded way that all this was done through and it was it was pulled on us just like this meeting was we did not know the meeting was coming up, so we told our people to be here Thursday. And then all of a sudden, oh, another meeting is called Tuesday. Um, that was sneaky. What else is sneaky is the seat, the con, um, was it con? What we're borrowing, the, the money, the con, I don't know what you call it. <laughs> okay, capital outlay note. The interest I'm hearing is the highest of anything else, any other way we could borrow. Um, why is that? Why couldn't we have another way of funding? Because you don't have to use, you don't have to have our vote for it. That's sneaky. That is very, very sneaky. And the citizens of this city are tired of the underhanded way that this has been done. Um, I want to know how much my taxes are going to be if we get this note through. Um, what's the interest? I don't know anything about the interest. Is the interest on this going to be 10%? Is it going to be 20%? How much would an interest be on another type of loan? I want to know that. Are you sincerely representing the citizens of Lakeland? Some people are on the board. Some are not. And I'm tired of being conned. And that's the way I feel like this loan is. It's a CON loan, and we are being conned. And I don't appreciate it for one bit. So you can put in your $40 million high school, but I think you better find a better way to fund it. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Patrick, and then next will be Ellen Saba. Patrick Simmons, 9305 Salem Road. 
fairly new to Lakeland, so all this stuff that happened years before, I, I wasn't here for it. Um, to Commissioner Dial's point about the taxes, I appreciate your concern about the senior citizens. Uh, I do feel like if we are looking at a tax increase, then the rest of the working people will shoulder an even higher burden if we uh, freeze the taxes on, on the senior citizens. Um, I'm going to be real brief because I feel like everything's been said, but uh, I do want to say that uh, I do believe that the people voted in 2015. Since then, we've had an election, and uh, something this serious, it, it needs to be brought before the people again. Uh, if you're going to put in a park or you're going to put in a sewer or something, we don't need to go to the polls on it. But something this serious, I think, needs to go to the polls. And uh, I think if the, if the citizens want to put the city in financial harm, then let them do it. Let it be our fault, not yours. And uh, I appreciate the chance to, to address you tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Amy, actually, you'll stage behind. Uh, go ahead, Nick. I'm sorry, Ellen. Good evening, my name is Ellen Saba. I live at 4311 Oak Point Circle. I am a resident of Lakeland. I am a business owner. Um, I'm involved with different chambers around town. I'm a member of the National Association of Women Business Owners, and I'm a parent of three children. We moved to Lakeland in 2006 for the school district, okay? Let me start by saying I am not opposed to Lakeland having their own school district. I'm opposed to the way it's being done, the way it's being forced on us with, without a choice, at a high rate that it shouldn't be done at. We voted for it. I would like to see another vote go into effect, but I have questions for all of you that I think need to be addressed before we go further. Why is this being rushed on the citizens and why is it being forced on us? Could we not take more time to fully think this out and come up with a plan that makes everybody happy or as close to everybody as we can, a majority? Why does it have to be this type of loan? Is it not the most expensive option? <coughs> Could we not postpone this for just a little while to come up with another option that benefits us as a city better? <coughs> what is going to happen to the growth projections that y'all are showing when our city goes from one of the lowest property tax rates to the highest property tax rate for all the municipalities? And we don't even have a fire department. We don't even have a police department. But you want to put our tax rate as the highest one in the area. And then when those of you who are choosing to force this on us are no longer in office, what's going to happen to the rest of us that have to sit here and pick up the pieces from the mess you make? What is going to entice people to move to Lakeland when they can go next door to Bartlett or they can go to Collierville or Germantown for a, left, a lower <coughs> tax rate and get better services? How are we going to grow when you're basically tying our hands here? In closing, I do want to say again, I'm not against this high school, <coughs> I'm against this plan the way it's being done. And I have a question directly for you. What is the household income that is required to have that tax freeze? That's why I've asked Mr. Horn to get that information. I asked him on Friday, and I want him to have it for the Thursday meeting, and he has agreed to do that. Because, yes, we are a, I mean, we have a huge retirement community here. And if they all get tax freezes, what happens to the rest of us? I don't get a tax freeze. Um, as a citizen, I see the benefits of having a high school, of having a great school district. I want a great school district. I want to be proud of what our city has to offer for people. But can we not go about this in a way that doesn't harm the citizens of this city, that doesn't 
force us to either choose to move out of the city we chose to move into because you're forcing our hand on it. I just implore you all to reconsider and think about who y'all are genuinely working for. It's everybody, not just this group, not just this group. There's been a lot of mudslinging on both sides. Just work together and come to a good compromise. Your grown-ups act like that. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Amy. And up next will be Al Dane. Amy Foster, 10293 Oak Bank Cove. Uh, I appreciate you considering all citizens of Lakeland. Um, I do understand you're in a difficult position. I'd like for you to represent the people who elected you and consider all of Lakeland as you move forward. My personal opinion, <coughs> raise the taxes, build the school, unite the city. Thank you, Amy. Al, Dave, and finally, Michael Green will be last. I'm Al Dane, and I live at 970 Red Hill Drive. Built the house here 25 years ago. First house to go on Plantation Hills. The reason I built the house here was it was a beautiful community. Now, first point is, the five of you all have to remember you represent, you're not leader, you represent the other 12,000 people of the city. And apparently that's not happening. You pretty much say to damn what you people think. We're going to do this. And we're going to bypass and make sure you don't have the opportunity to vote on it. So remember, you represent us. There's no reason for us to go. Back in the 50s, we used to call this Con, uh, no. You're going to a mouse house to borrow money. You might as well go down to one of these title shops and title the vehicles that we've got here in Lakeland. Go there and borrow the money. You know, keep the title, borrow the money, because that's what you're doing with the con. Instead of going to a responsible method, and I know. Many of you are very concerned that people of Lakeland will go ahead and referendum and vote you out on a bond. Well, <coughs> you have to take that chance. But don't hoodwink us as you have. The second part is, on this resolution, you hired two gentlemen that are very learned, have great credentials, and they brought up what the true state of Lakeland's finances are. Didn't like numbers. Bam, bam. Well, we're going to go hire PFM, is it? Who last time hoodwinked all of us in this telling us we could do this and we couldn't. So instead, we had a big tax increase. I don't know why we have these two gentlemen hired and paying these salaries if we don't understand and believe what they got to tell us. They're both professional people. So I would suggest instead of uh, going to do your due diligence, fire them and hire some more people. But unfortunately, they're going to tell you the same thing. We're broke. We don't have the money. Now, the last thing I want to say, and this is to you, Commissioner Rowan, you owe the people of Lakeland a sincere apology for the way you have conducted yourself in this area. And I would appreciate to hear it from you. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Thank you. All right, and the last will be Michael Green. Mr. Mayor, you lost a card, apparently, because I filled one out. John Brown. <laughs> you want to go next, Mr. Brown? I'll be happy to go. You want to go last? <laughs> John Brown, I am sorry I have your card. It must be stuck to the back of one of the other ones. 
John Brown, 4046 Lock of Weeks Point. Uh, just a quick recap of the major subject. I'm not against schools either, but uh, this is being done wrong and there's no need for it at the present time. To address something that the other gentleman said about us being 120th in the state and property taxes, he conveniently left out the fact that we pay, pay fire fees and sewage fees, very high fire fees and sewage fees on top of that, which brings us way up. Having said that, I'm going to address more of the topic of, of, of what this meeting is, and that's the consultants. Uh, way back when, five or six years ago, whenever it was, when we were first uh, voting on whether or not to even establish our own school district, uh, the consultant we hired then uh, presented his plan and he completely left out anything in, in it for new schools. And I stood up and I said, this plan is incomplete because we're going to need a middle school within just a couple years. Uh, when I was done, he stood up and said, you don't know what you're talking about. Well, lo and behold, just a year later, he's the same person is saying we need both a high school and a middle school. So if we're considering that same consultant, I'd say let's get somebody else. The same thing with the bond consultants. Uh, the last time we used them, we used them as consultants when in fact they were going to be the ones who were going to profit off selling the bonds. And what do you think the people who are going to profit from, from the bonds are going to tell you? And they gave us bogus information then, and, and if it's the same people, they'll do it again. And uh, there's a very simple answer to this whole thing, which some other people have brought up. Uh, if you go with general obligation bonds that we get to vote on, everybody here, I'm not against schools, everybody here, if the will of the people says we do it, fine, we do it, but we'll, we'll be able to do it in a more financially feasible way. Uh, and if, it, if, if it's voted down, then it put to rest for a few years until we actually do need a new school because all the arguments right now for needing a new school, the fact that we need it for growth, you don't build schools to promote growth, you build schools as a result of growth when you need them. And as far as our own control and all that stuff, but Arlington's a great school and uh, I have, I'm of course too old to have kids in school at this point, but my kids went to Arlington school when, when they were younger and I know lots of people who do have kids there and they all Love it, great school, great programs. Every program you could ever you could ever wish to have, which our school will not have for a long time. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. All right. Mr. Green. Good evening. Sorry for the beat, I'll take it tonight. Uh, I will make my quick. Um, a couple things. You know, tonight we have people in here that want the school, don't want the school. Uh, can't afford the school, can't afford the school. And some of the, the bonding and some of the, the language that has been spoken about how to finance the school, uh, Kyle had given four options. You know, and, I, and I think that I know that the, the CON type funding is going to be the highest that can fund the school. You know, as, as a city overall, we're trying to find compromises and we're trying to find ways to make things happen. Now, there's retirees here, and then there's folks that are young and have plenty of money to do whatever. So I think to serve both sides of that, to bring the city together, that we need to find a mutual ground. Whether, you know, one of the greatest things, one of the greatest ideas that I've heard so far is the one you said. Put a stake in the ground, and let's do it over here. That gives us a little bit of time, one, to come up with some resources. We have the Lake District. I see dirt moving over there. We have some, some growth coming on into the city. You know, we say there's houses being built. We'll allow that that, that funding to, to, to come into the city so that we can afford this. And right now, you know, a lot of people say they don't trust this person or they don't trust that person. Well, it's because of where we've been. You know, typically past history is a great predictor of future behavior. And that's why a lot of the citizens don't trust the board, unfortunately. You know, like a couple of gentlemen stated that basically, uh, you know, the, let the people speak. Now, I know that's a million dollar statement because of the way some of the money can happen with some of these bonds. That can't happen. The, the, the board has already proven that. And that's why myself, I don't trust uh, some of the board and, and what they're going to do with some of the money. 
Uh, you know, I mean, I have, I have one question for Miss Dowell. I mean, she's educated. And, uh, you know, uh, you're a principal or assistant principal? Assistant principal. Um, one of my questions, and again, this is because I don't trust a lot of people, and, and I'm not saying that I dislike anyone up there because I love all of you, and I pray for all of you to make the right decisions because, you know, you guys have got your hands full. I'm just going to tell you that, especially this guy right here. <laughs> but have you been promised a job with the Lakeland schools? Absolutely not. Would you accept one if you had one offered to you after all this stuff happened? Absolutely not. Okay. And let me tell you why. Okay. I'm in my 30th year of my career, and I'm not going anywhere. Okay. And um, I shared with my bosses in the Bartlett City School System the um, incorrect accusation of the people who were saying that I had been promised a school. I know what people are referring to because jokingly when Ted Coral presented the middle school way back when it was presented, he said these would be the admin offices like the assistant principal and referred to me because I am an assistant principal. Sure. He sent me from Lakeland School System to Bartlett School System because he was happy with me getting a job promotion from teacher for 25 years to an administrator. So I, I cannot believe that anybody would even assume that. But I talked to the superintendent of Bartlett City Schools yesterday and told him that that was be tout, being touted about and we got a big laugh out of it. Because well, I'm staying where I am because well, I'm know, very happy. As many of you know, I ran for commissioner and I have Sometimes I think I'm the mayor. <laughs> People call me and ask me a thousand questions. Yeah. But that's that's where I am with the way that we are going to try and finance the school. You know, I know that again, and I want to emphasize, like a couple of gentlemen said, you know, let these guys right here run the city. And I know that you guys have a job to do and you have agendas to do and whatnot. You want to put it into the city, and I respect that. Well, but, Mr. Green, those types of comments that you're asking me about are the exact type of comments that could, that actually create mistrust. And someone believing that and believing that there are ulterior motives in this job need to get a grip on reality and realize that we are here because we worked hard to be here. And you know the hard work that we all went through to get here because you did that as well. Absolutely. And any type of insinuation of that type is is so incredibly far left to even start that conversation because there are people that read that and then start believing it and then start telling someone else and then it grows out of control to this thing that has just <coughs> taken on a life of its own. That's why I and you know what? I am really glad you did because that gave me an opportunity to say to the public, to the media, to anybody watching at home that that has been totally derived by someone who is obviously wanting to try to hurt me personally well, and with my job. Well, and again, in a public way like this is the way that you answer those questions. And I really appreciate you asking. And a, lot, me the opportunity. and a lot of times, that's why I like the bond, the bond, the way this stuff is funded. That's why a lot of the people don't trust because of previous uh, embarkments on funding schools. You know, right. personally, and I'll be honest with you, and I'll probably have people here that won't like me. I think that we will eventually need a high school. I think that's awesome because that is growth. But I just think that we need to grow that school when we need that school. And another last question, I know I'm pushing time. Has anyone communicated to all of you? Because at one point, Dr. Oral said something about how they would phase in the school. Well, with a couple hundred kids in the ninth grade, when we're already strapped for cash, are we going to talk to Arlington and say, hey, the 10th, 11th, 12th graders are going to be there, and just the ninth graders is what we're going to educate? Or, I mean, that, that, that's, that's my question. Have we communicated any of this stuff to Arlington? I don't want to be the one to keep talking, but I would like to respond if you don't have the response. I think that probably is a question for the school board. Uh, exactly. Fall under Ted. So because you know we're 
uh, my daughter's in the 10th grade at Arlington. And she's like, Dad, are we gonna, am I going to go to Lakeland High School? And I was like, no, baby, you're going to graduate tomorrow. But she goes, a lot of my friends are concerned about that. Because she goes, you know, we don't, I want to stay with my friends and I want to stay with where I am now. You know, and that's, I just think that, you know, we make this about money and yes, school and no school. But has anybody communicated it to the kids? Well, that's another misconception. This is a funding body. This is a body that responds to the needs of other areas in the city. And we are responding with the financing options because we, it was requested by the school board. The school board is who makes that decision as to whether the school is needed or not. The school board looks to us as a funding body to look for ways to fund that. And Dr. Horrell stood there last Thursday and said that if we could get the funding within the next 60 to 90 days, that we could build out and be ready at the time that Mayor Cunningham put his stake in the ground and said 2022. And there's a possibility it could even be ready prior to that. So that is why we are here today. Because we, it, there was a direct request from the school board asking us to find the funding. And that is why we're here, looking for options and ways to find the funding. And that is the truth. And that is why we're here. We are not here to determine whether it's time for the school to be built. That job is of the school board and the school board members. So thank you again for a very good question so that we can give point of clarification. And there are still people who are not going to believe that answer, but that is exactly how this government works in Lakeland. The school board comes to us for their needs and then we do what we can to help them accomplish those needs. But is it also important as the board to be able to sometimes, I don't want to say override the school board, but if you, like if your child wants a fancy car and they're 16 years old and you know they don't need that, then you say no. Absolutely. We are the board that funds that. Absolutely. So isn't it important sometimes to make sure that, hey, I hear you, but we have a great high school right now where there's not games running in and out of the parking lot, there's not dope in the hallways. That we know of. Well, every high school in America's got that's dope. Right. I'm just telling you. That's right. That's um, right. But that, that's my point. It, it is, but every one of us here had an opinion on the school. Okay. You know, Mayor Cunningham and, Mr. and Commissioner Gonzalez ran on the premise that, yes, they know there's going to be a school needed, but here's what they think. The rest of us run, here's a school, this is what we think. We have the support and the, the, the request to find the funding for this school and that if it could be funded, we could find the funding within the next 60 to 90 days, that we would be able to have complete build out by the time that I believe everyone on this board has agreed for 2022. There is a possibility that it could even be ready one year earlier. So we do see that there can be growth. These neighborhoods can be built. There can be more dirt moved at the Lake District. Lake, Lakeland Commons can come on in the next couple of years while this school is being built. The school system has even come to us and told us that they will give money that they have been able to save to be able to help us make those first few payments to get us down the road. So this is not just something that has occurred. This is something that's been going on and on the minds of the school board for many years. So it, this isn't just thrown together thinking this has been a great point of concern for the people who don't want a school, but it's also a great point of concern for those who do. Thank all you guys. Thank you, Thank you Michael. Uh, I was given one more card, Mr. Tim Roberts, if you would, please. Hi, I'm Tim Roberts, and once again, 10136 Mackwood Drive. Once again, thanks to all of y'all for getting up on that podium in front of such a wonderful audience here. It changes week to week, and it's pretty crowded today, and it's very lopsided um, with the group of people that are here today. So that's that's what happens in a democracy, right? 
So what I'd like to reiterate is that I am pro school, I'm pro high school, I'm pro build now. Uh, our students deserve a high school in our town because our, you know, schools are the heart of the city. And we circulated what Arlington said about their school. A lot of people asked how many students were in their school when they started their high school. I think it was, I'm going to guess off the top of my head, 335. And the population was much smaller than what we have now. And it was a different time back then. The county schools um, had control of that. So along came a, a vote, and we voted to have our own school system in Lakeland. And that means that we need to make it whole. We need to be K through 12 all the way to the top. And we are kicking the can down the road every year that we wait. We cannot continue to do that. And once again, we have a complete system. Arlington agreed to an interlocal agreement to help us get started, but not to forever and ever, amen, take care of our students. They're going to take care of their students first. And we need to take care of our students. That's our responsibility. The school board is planning for the future, and those who remember Lakeland as a vacation park destination are not really seeing Lakeland as it is today. North Lakeland is beautiful. I love driving through there, and I don't want anything to happen to that, and I think there will be controls over that. But this side of town is growing, and it's growing with people from outside of town. The population is changing in age. Um, let's see. We tend to notice our circle of friends in our own neighborhoods. So if you look at the data, our wonderful senior citizens, who my parents are 75 years old, so I respect all of the senior citizens, about 12 or 13 percent of the population. About a third of the population is less than 19. These are the folks that were building the high school before. And then about 51 percent are working age, 20 to 64. So we're all the taxpayers. We need to support our students. We need to build this school now. Thank you for your support, and I appreciate your listening to me. Thank you, Tim. All right. I just want to say thank you to everyone for bearing with uh, allowing the citizens to speak. Uh, and before we move in and have Ms. Deborah read the resolution so we can move on to that portion, I just want to clarify one thing. It's been said a couple of times up here, someone's paraphrase of what I said. My stake in the ground for this school starts in March of 2021 with a stake in the ground for financing it then. It's not financing it today. It's not financing it any time before that. That stake in the ground is set because our current loan for the middle school has a prepayment penalty, and I'll get cursed out for saying that word because I know that's not what it's called. But it equates to about $5 million. So the people that want to move this through are ready to waste $5 million of your tax money instead of waiting to when it makes sense. Our student enrollment is at that point, and we have time, like this, Ms. Ellen said, to plan accordingly and build a fantastic school. So I want to make it clear. My stake in the ground is not just opening the school in August of 2022. It's the funding mechanism. That's the state, and it's March of 2021. Thank you. And I want to go on record to apologize to you if I misunderstood, because when I heard you say that, I really believed that that's what you were saying. So I will apologize publicly to you, because I do not want that conflict <laughs> between us, and I want I. I did believe that when you said 2022 that that's when you wanted the doors to open. So please accept my apology. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just believe that at that point that gives us 18 months. My stake in the ground allowed for the school to use the funds that they've offered prior to that to do any preliminary work up and to the point where we can actually do the borrow at that point. So I just wanted to make that clear because that was what my uh, whole uh, presentation or my comments were about. So let's move on forward. Uh, Mr. Porter, if you would please read the first resolution. Resolution. No such intent to proceed with due diligence on a capital outlay note of 38 million for a new Lakeland High School. Move it. We have a second. Second. We have a motion and a second. The floor is open for discussion. If you would please recognize your willingness to speak through me, please. You have the floor, Commissioner Gonzalez. Before we get too far into this, I just want to make some numbers out here so everybody knows what's going on. So they, can, they, can, they can see the big difference between us and them and the municipalities. Barclay, Tennessee, their property tax is $1.83. They have 58,000, over 58,000 people. 
they have massive uh, sales tax numbers. I couldn't get their number, but I will get it for you. Germantown, um, Germantown's property rate is $1.95. They have 39,230 people. And if you would have read the commercial bill last week, the sales tax for Germantown in the month of October, $928,000. Okay, that's a lot of money. Now, it's not, I can't compare like to that, but it's a lot of money. Millington, little Millington over there. Their uh, property, uh, property tax rate is 153. They have 11,000 people, 11,073 to be exact. Um, Lakeland is sitting over here with 12,623 people. Our current property tax rate is $1.25. Best I can get from uh, the city manager and we're working on this for me. Uh, we're looking at $800,000 sales tax this year. It's a ballpark number. Arlington has a, has a sales tax rate of $1.15. They have 11,678 folks over there. And they have a high school. Everybody else has a high school except us. When you combine the populations of Arlington and Lakeland, you're looking at uh, 23,000 people, 23,300, something like that. 23,000 people, all right? That's still not close to any municipality, municipality except for Millington, which inherited a high school. So that's where we're on, this, we're still, we're on these numbers. And finally, um, I am here for the senior citizens. Uh, I'm, I'm recently retired. Uh, I'm fortunate to have a good fixed income, uh, but I'm telling you, as we move forward with this, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we're looking at a, um, uh, what's a good term for it, uh, evic economic eviction of our senior citizens in life, okay? That's what's going to happen. And Folks who are supporting the school, I understand you. I understand. I talked to I talked to every school board member at the uh, at the uh, functions during Veterans Day. I hear you, and I know, and I told you when we talked at those, at those events that we would meet in the middle and solve this problem. And the mayor has given us a compromise to make this thing work, and I support it. All I ask is that let help us help us make it work. Because on the current course, I keep hearing us talking about going to kill the city. We're just going to split it even worse. If the current divide has become permanent, um, you're talking about built, the homes being in, built in Lakeland right now, $350,000 and up. What's a tax rate of, uh, if you include the, uh, if you include the uh, fire department, of $399? What's that going to do? Excuse me, two ninety nine. What's that going to do to those guys trying to sell those homes? What's it going to do to the people living in Lakeland want to sell a home? And finally, what's that going to do to our businesses in Lakeland who pay forty percent taxes, forty percent tax, forty percent tax rate? So um, these things are important, and I, I beg you guys. I understand. Okay. I went to a great high school when I, in the city of Memphis, one of the best, best schools in the city during my time. And I understand, you, I understand what you want. We want you to have it, but we want you to work with us to make this compromise work and move on. Because it, 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 on the course we are now, our division within the fisher, it will not be, it will not be, this city will not help. So please, think about it, work with us, and we'll, we'll get it fixed. And I promised you that when I saw you guys in the school buildings, at the elementary school and the middle school on Veterans Day. I talked to everyone. Thank you. Yeah, folks. Yeah. Sure, thank you. So I requested this uh, resolution because uh, I spent some time and energy and put together what I thought was a presentation based on all the information that I know. The city came back and put together a presentation based on the information they know, and um, the numbers were pretty far off. So because the numbers were far off, I don't claim to be the city financial manager. And so I felt like the very next step was to get professionals involved and help us decide exactly what we can and can't use. One example of that is sales tax. In the city's uh, presentation, they excluded 
over 24% of our income. Now, if that's standard operating procedure, then and that's what Barn Council takes into consideration, then okay, then that's something that I didn't know, um, and I would have to adjust my numbers. If those numbers are correct and a dollar 14 is the number, of course, I wouldn't uh, support that, and I wouldn't expect anybody else to support that either. But the thing is, is we've got to figure out what assumptions this board is comfortable with, what assumptions they aren't, and get to the real number so that we can make a, a healthy decision for the city. And uh, that's why I put the resolution, and I encourage you to vote for it. I'll be, I'll be real quick. It's actually great to see a lot of people here, and this is maybe the most I've seen uh, being up here or being back there as a citizen. Uh, so thank you for all, for all of you coming. Um, I take I take everything into consideration. Um, I can say a lot of things right now, but I don't want to be here for another hour uh, responding. But one thing I would say is when uh, Lakeland School started building the middle school that we needed, Arlington Middle was already overcrowded. I just I just want people to know that uh, they don't deny it. 120 percent capacity. Um, so that's that's overcrowded. Uh, and that's something Arlington schools do not deny. So I just want that to be out there for people to understand that when we built the middle school, I wasn't up here yet. It was something that was needed. It wasn't a want, it was a need. Thank you. Any further discussion on the topic? I'll finish up by I just. Uh, I've sat here and I've listened to everybody's uh, comments. I think everybody who's met me on the campaign trail knows me and knows what I believe in. And uh, I've offered a compromise. And I'll put it to you this way. I went somewhere between the people that want it tomorrow and the people that want it 10 years from now. I stepped in two-thirds of the way. I say four years is the right time. That's the 22 or 20, 22, 20, 23 school year. If that's not a compromise, nothing is. My stake in the ground, as I said earlier, is finding the funding. After the penalty goes away on the current loan, we save $5 million immediately. We can start using the school money ahead of that time to get ourselves ready. It gives us 18 months to build a school, and I know we can do it because we built the middle school in a year. The site's already prepped. The infrastructure's there. I've already confirmed that. It can be done in that amount of time. And that's just the way it is, folks. I've offered a compromise. I said I would come up here and I would represent everyone as a mayor. I stepped in two-thirds of the way and I ask you folks to really think about what you're doing. And let's come together. That will unite this city, I do believe. Everybody gets what they want and we do it wisely. And that's all I have to say. We're ready to go to vote. Amen. Madam Recorder, if you would please call the roll. Yes. Commissioner Dow? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? No. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Mayor Cunningham? No. Three yes, two no. The yeses have it. Let's uh, move on. If you would, Madam Recorder, read the second resolution. Okay. Resolution approving legal service agreement with Attorney Michael Marshall and the law firm of Evans PC. I have a motion to bring this to the floor. Let's move it. Second. Any discussion? Madam Recorder, if you would please call the roll. Vice Mayor Roman? Yes. Commissioner Dow? Yes. Commissioner Gonzalez? Yes. Commissioner Wright? Yes. Mayor Cunningham? Abstain. One yes, one abstention. Right, the eyes have that, and I right, hear a motion to adjourn. Let's see it. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed say no? All right. It is adjourned. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>